Hi everyone, welcome to the Lyle Blah Blah. Am I testing or am I live? I think I'm live. <laughs> welcome to the live stream, Electronic Campfire numero 29, I think. Yes, number 29. Today is September 22nd, and Giriguana and I are going to open up a big box with a GFX 102 camera. At GFX 102. I lose track of these names. Couple of things before I jump in, I want to get clear right off the bat. I didn't buy one, okay? I, I'm out of kidneys. I have no more to sell to buy a GFX. However, Fujifilm North America did loan me one. They were kind enough to reach out, and I have it for a couple of weeks maximum. So clock is ticking after today's live stream. So I'm going to open it up here, and yeah, I figured why not? It'd be fun. And then I'm going to test the heck out of it. I'm going to go out shooting with it. I'm going to look at all the new video features, and I'll show you a few today and a few of the other things that I think are cool on the camera. But remember, this is not the review of the GFX. It's just kind of a, an unboxing, a fun live stream to kick off our weekend. Let's see who's here. Who do we have? By the way, um, backstage members, Discord members, YouTube channel members, my apologies for absolutely zero notice about today's live stream. I didn't even decide to do one until a couple of hours ago, and there's a reason for that. And the reason is this little uh, this little guy right here. Okay, I'm in the middle of making a video on this thing, and you know, I thought should I publish the video? I only had time to do one thing, so it was either edit like crazy, rush, and publish that video today. Okay, or do this live stream, have a little fun for a change, and then. If I get around to it, no, I won't do it tomorrow. I'm with my son. So it'll probably go up on Monday. It's okay. Who cares, right? <laughs> it doesn't matter. So we're here. I am live with you. And by the way, this is a cool little thing, but I've, I've got some things to say about it too. So you don't want to miss that video. All right. Who do we have here? Let's start at the beginning. David, are you the very first one? I think so. Maybe. We've got Chris Card from Switzerland. Hey, Chris, Marcel, Uti, Greg, Miguel, Renato. Oh, inscrutable owl. I got some backstage folks here. I'm so sorry about the lack of notice. Christopher Wu, how you doing, pal? Hey, Patrick from Italy. Great. Grazie for joining me. Um, the best thing, I, I love watching your videos because I get to see this incredible background that you know, when I go out and I film videos, usually it's a target in the background, you know, <laughs> or, or it's like a Cracker Barrel, Waffle House, McDonald's, you know, like, like a cartoon running in the background. You know, welcome to, you know, suburban America. But Italy, oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. So I am so glad you're here. Welcome. And who else do we have? We got Warner from Belgium. Hello, Warner. Peter. Sorry if I missed you. I'm going fast. I've only got 45 minutes today, and we got to get unboxing. So, as I said, Fujifilm did reach out to me, and I thought long and hard. How should I answer that? <laughs> right? I can't really get into who it was. I, I, you know, they take their, I guess, their employee privacy seriously. So I'm not going to mention any names. I'm not going to mention any departments. However. When I responded back to them, and the backstage folks will tell you this is true because I shared, I blacked out portions of that email that had identifying information, but I shared the email. And when I responded back to Fujifilm, okay, I responded back to them from Giriguana, right? So it said, you know, hell, hell, I think it said, hell yeah, love to test it out, send whatever lens can fit on it, you know, something like that. Thank you so much. I promise I'll return it in two weeks. Sincerely, Giriguana. <laughs> and I put his, you know, Giriguana's picture at the bottom. No joke. Honest to God, I did that. And it's like, let's just have fun. You know, you don't have to be so serious with stuff. So, that was, that is honest to gosh how I responded to Fuji, but I do want to say a big thank you to Fujifilm for entrusting 
<laughs> this ch do I have any identifying from okay good I I, <laughs> I took off like the address on here but here's the bo the box okay now I did I just wrote this on here for the YouTube cover photo but this is the box they sent and I have not dug inside it now I must admit I did peek there was no way I could I could help it but I just opened up the top to make sure there was in fact a camera in here <laughs> okay because sometimes there's mix-ups and I didn't need that on live YouTube TV or whatever so that's all I did I just kind of looked at it and then I closed it back up and I actually put the tape back on and shot the cover photo and decided last second to do today's live stream so to the 133 of you watching I am so happy to now do the unboxing of a camera that I cannot afford <laughs> so we need a pro what's that okay your iguana wants a special cutter so we're going to use this one it's a um what do you call it? it's a butterfly knife right <laughs> there we go okay i just wanted to look cool so let's open it here we go can i get an overhead shot let's see if i can get one of those boom do we have a yeah we're just rocking the tech tonight okay so can this thing there we go i want to cut the camera <laughs> okay we have hold on a minute put this away wrapping we've got oh now I'm going to find out what lens they sent because I you know I wasn't totally sure. So they sent a 55 millimeter f 1.7. That's the lens we've got. Bunch of packing stuff here, and don't want to lose that. Okay, so first thing is this right here. This is the lens. There it is. White box, which is the sort of look and branding that Fuji does for the GFX line. All of the XT cameras and, you know, the XS10 and all of that, they come in black boxes. So Fuji goes, you know, white on the GFX lineup. So here's what it looks like right here. The box that I will never be able to own. <laughs> right? yeah. This is a lot of money. This thing. Whoops. No, just kidding. Okay. So here it is. Put it down right here we have overhead just like that okay wonderful oh i'm getting heart palpitations just looking at this thing you know i mean what about yeah i am too right a gear iguana is too so we're we're both excited um i gotta be really careful with this because i have to return it <laughs> right? and my apologies to anybody out there who's you know really serious and could probably do a much better job of explaining the camera than I can and you have to now you know maybe this is the model you're supposed to test I'm sorry but I'll get through it really quickly and send it back I promise mm. okay folks here we go we're going to open this up now now I'm going to make sure I have enough space on the desk and that you can see it we are going to go to overhead cam yep here we are but we're having some focusing issues come on there we go Okay, so, and by the way, this is an X-T2 that is getting the overhead shot. Okie doke, here we go, the GFX 100S. What is the first thing we get? Oh, look at that, Capture One. Well, that's interesting, Capture One front and center when you open up a box like this. So, huh, tells you kind of where Fuji is, you know, partnering up with, I guess. So that, that, that's what that is. All right, and we have one, two, three, four, looks like five compartments. So let's get to the little stuff first. And there we go, how's that, is that better? Okay, can you see it okay? Oh, a battery, good, good, good. Oh, that is a really bright, let me turn this down. There we go, just a little bit. Okay, so we got, and by the way, the, the GFX line takes the same battery as the X-T4 and the X-T5 and the X-S10. I don't remember the technical, there's a, there's a number for it, doesn't matter. That's the battery they take. We've got, oh, looks like international plugs. They've got some, you know, um, various plugs, most likely for 
yeah, all the all the countries are represented. You got your typical strap, okay? That I don't know if anybody uses that. Here is the USB-C connector for the power, right? So we got that. Um, which, you know, it can use pretty much any USB-C power cable as long as it supports the charge. You gotta be careful with that. You can't just plug in any USB-C cable and have it charge as quickly as maybe a different cable would be. I think a lot of people miss that, and they're gonna find out real quick with the iPhone 15 and the 15 Pro, which just recently switched over to USB-C. Okay, what else do we have? Um... What is this thing? Oh, the viewfinder. Right here it is. Can you see it? Okay, so we have our viewfinder, which is awesome. And this, by the way, has, you know, a really, can you see it here? There we go. How's that? Is that better? This viewfinder just has a really just nice, heavy, heavy feel to it. I mean, it's, it, it's a premium product, no question about it. Okay. All right, cord. What else is in here? We got the strap. I just don't want to lose anything. Oh, okay, I think, I think we're coming to the, the moment. Ah, uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm so excited. I just can't. Kind of, mm. Okay. How's everybody doing, by the way? You know, I, I want to talk to you, and I will toward the end. We, we got to get through this unboxing. Okay, so here we go. Overhead. This is it. I don't think this thing's ever been open. It's like sealed up. Whoa, okay, have a look at this. Moment of um, silence, please. This is some camera. So, a couple of things, my first impression right now. I mean, I'll just, I'll just tell you. It is, it is heavy. It's substantial, okay? It is solid. You know the feeling you get when you first, or maybe at some point when you picked up like the iPhone or a smartphone and it felt really dense, you know what I mean? It, it just, it felt like for the size of it, it should weigh a little bit less. And it felt like it was just packed to the gills with electronics and all kinds of things. That's how this feels. It feels just densely packed. So let's get back to it. Okay, so we have this, we got the top right here. Look at that. All right. And I got my fingerprints smudges. It, it was not smudged when I took it out of the box. <laughs> but we have the articulating screen that is exactly the same as the, um, you know, the X-T5 and the X-T3. So same type of screen setup. Now that's, I think it doesn't flip around or does it? Yeah, no. Well, wait a second. Yeah, it kind of does a little bit. It's like, Here's how it articulates. So it goes like this. You can flip it out like that, back, up, all the way, down. So, you know, you can have it like that if you're shooting low. And, you know, the idea here, obviously, is to, to have this kind of thing, which I'm, you know, it with the video spec on this camera, obviously it's not a vlogging camera, but, and I understand there's no way, like if you flip this, if they made this a flippy screen, it would flip around like that and then it would cause all of these ports to just have a problem. I mentioned this on the XS20 review video. So, you know, it's like, how do you do that? How do you put a camera together where do you shove them all on this side? Because no matter what, if you flip out that screen like this, you know, the only other option would be some kind of up and over, but I think it's good the way they did it. I, I actually, you know, with, the, with what you need this camera for, it seems the logical way of doing it. So let's get back to this. So we have the base right here. Now let's take a look at what you're paying for, right? I mean, at the end of the day, you're paying for one main thing and one main thing only. This right here, medium format sensor. That is, you know, the real, the real thing. And I have in my notes here, let me just show this while I'm pulling these up. So we are at 102 megapixels with this thing. I don't even, <laughs> I don't even want to keep it open that long. I, but I did want you to get a good look at it. So we are at 102 megapixels. Um, you know, <laughs> now I've got this uh, little, some notes here. 
102 megapixels, which is 1.7 times larger than a 35 millimeter sensors found in full frame. So take full frame and this is 1.7 times larger. Okay. So we're talking a fairly big sensor now, you know, if you're jumping, especially if you're jumping from like an X-T5. And so obviously to power that, they upgraded the processor, right? So they indicate it's a generation X processor five and they upgraded that, you know, usual marketing stuff, blah, 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 blah. Um, and I am going to do a full blown video on this. So, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go through all of these specs now because there's a gazillion of them, but the other thing it has, which is interesting is you've got kind of this, it's just, you can feel it. It's like a premium feel. There's the grip. Here's what the grip looks like. Can you see that? Hold on. So it's like there, right? Right there. So you're, you know, now as I'm holding it, first impression for my hands, for my hands, this could not fit better. This is, this is perfect for me, but I will admit if you are, you have hands that are on the smaller side, this may be a reach because if you look right here, you know, it's a pretty wide reach to get up. You see that? So boom, boom, there's the button right there. And obviously this is a PASM setup, right? PASM dial all the way, which is fine. You know, I understand the, the reasoning for that, you know, versus, you know, this setup here. So this is what it kind of looks like in comparison to, you know, the XT five. Yeah. It's funny because it's not, I mean, it's, it is bigger, no question about it. But what's interesting is that they make the, all the advertising and everything for the XT five was this is small, it's compact, it's retro. The difference between these two cameras is astounding, you know, in terms of performance and what they can do. Um, now let's take a look just out of curiosity, cause I'm probably never going to get a chance to do this again at the sensors on both. So this is the difference now between a cropped sensor and a medium format. Have a look at that. Okay. You see that? You see that right there? That's the difference. Okay. That is where your money's going, <laughs> right? So that is that. Again, it's a totally different market. It's a totally different group of photographers. It's, and that was my feeling about the summit. How many of you watched the summit when I did the live party for that? You know, we talked about that, that this summit was a hundred percent GFX focused. It, it didn't mention X at all, really. So, you know, let's, let's put a lens on it. So we have the 55 here. 1.7 and anything interesting about that lens before we open it up. Eh, I don't think so. Yeah. See 55. Yeah. I'll probably discuss a lot of this stuff when I do it. Here it is. Blah, 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 blah. So they're saying that it's a wider focal length and a field of view that is, and this is what Fuji says, a field of view that is very similar to that of the human eye. So that was the, idea behind the design and the release of this lens for the GFX. Well, let's open it up. Take a look. All right. We have your standard bag. Does anybody actually use these? Uh, honestly, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're better than the standard ones you get, you know, on, on less expensive lenses, but I mean, does anybody really use these bags? Maybe you do. And if you do, good for you. It's cool. Here's an owner's manual for it. All right. There you go. And let's see what we have inside here. I think we got to turn it this way. There we go. And there it is. The lens. Let's look at the lens hood. Okay. Let's comment. Tell me in the comments, do you prefer plastic or metal lens hood? I, I've seen people get in arguments over this. Don't do that today, but <laughs> I've seen, you know, so here we go. We're at a 55 right there. Plastic all the way, you know, the usual, usual Fuji lens hood, nothing fancy there. Heavy sucker, heavy, 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 heavy. 
So uh, that's my first impression. This one is also quite heavy. So this with the camera, you know, they showed at the release, they showed street photography. This is quite a thing and this to lug around on the street. <laughs> and so plus it's heavy and expensive. So here we are. Look how nice this looks. Just gorgeous. Let's get you up here so we can take a look. Looks like we've got a little C, which I'm assuming converts it over to the dial. I'd like it does on the, I don't have to look into this. I honestly don't know. We got aperture ring right here going all the way down. 1.7. Yep, that's it. Click. Can you hear it? Okay, that's the aperture ring. Focus. Big, big focus ring. <laughs> I mean, look at that thing. <laughs> it's funny because if you look at the difference, let's see, where's my XT? If you look at the difference between, say, you know, a focus ring on <laughs> the 10 to 24, which is this, this one right there, you know, <laughs> and this, I mean, look at that. That's crazy. So huge focus ring. All right. All right we're going to look at this in a second. I got to clean house and get a drink of water and check in with you. So hold on to be continued. We've got lots of stuff to go through. So how are you all doing? What do you think of it so far? I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful camera. I mean, I haven't even turned it on yet and I'm, I'm already in love with it. So it is gorgeous and it feels premium. I mean, it just has that, again, it's, it's that dense feeling to it. Um, you know, Oh, we got a lot of people now. 226. Welcome. Welcome all the new folks. Okay, so let's put the lens on the camera. Back to overhead. Here we go. You know what? Let's make this a little brighter here. All right, there we go. Okay, so. Look at that. Just gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Obviously, you can see there's the electronic contact points there that talk to the camera. I gotta be real careful with this one. <laughs> okay, so let's put this on. It it's a it's a bit of a like it's it's tight. I mean, it's not an easy lens to put on. Like, for example, and I do this all the time in my videos, you know, I'll have a lens on and I'll blah, 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 blah. And I'm talking and I'm just kind of like constantly doing that. It's easy to do that. You you can't do that with this thing. It is a you can't like put it on while you're thinking of something else. It is definitely a, you know. When you're putting it on, you're putting it on. <laughs> you're not you're not multitasking. So, but here's what it looks like, okay, with it on. Look at that. You see that? Beautiful camera. See it from here. Let's have a look here. There it is. Let's take a look at the bottom of it. All right, so what do we have at the very bottom? Obviously, this is for the grip, the bottom components. I think they've got, it's the internet one, and I have to look into it. To be perfectly honest, I don't remember. <laughs> I, and that's the thing. <laughs> I have been, over the past four or five days, immersed in this. You know, this has been so... <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going from this to this. What if I, like, made a thumbnail and put, you know, verses... <laughs> I just had that and just verses that would be I wonder if anybody would click on that or if they think I was crazy So let's put the battery in Easy easy here. Let's take a look at the slots. So here we have let's See if you can see it a CF Express and an SD card CF Express and an SD card you see that right there which is great. Oh, do I even have an SD card? <laughs> I guess I can take one out of this camera. Hopefully I still, I don't have one here. That's great. Do a live stream and don't, did maybe they included an SD? I'll have to go get one. So I'll do that in a second. How are we on time? 
Uh, we're good. So, got the battery in there. In fact, I'm gonna probably need to do that right now. So, Gear Guan is gonna keep his eye on you. I'm gonna go get an SD card. Because <laughs> we're live, <laughs> right? And I don't have one. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> Got it with me. Got it with me. So just a simple um, one right here. Let's put it in. Goes in slot two. Interestingly, you know, the Nikon ZF that just came out, you know, the, the one that <laughs> Nikon literally... <clears throat> Let's just say they were very influenced by this dials, kind of retro camera, right? I don't know if you know this or not, but it has two card slots. One of them is an SD. The other is a micro SD. I told the backstage folks that for me would be a deal, deal killer because I have nothing but problems with micro SD. I mean, <laughs> I lose them all the time. They're, they're mic you need an electron microscope to see them. And at least I do. And half the time they don't connect. They're slower. There's just, I wouldn't like that. I, I like having regular SD or a CF and an SD, but so I, and this is a thick solid door right here too. So we got, you know, again, it's all this premium product is definitely there. Let's take a look what we have on the side. We have a regular HDMI port, <laughs> right? Trust me, that makes me happy. So we've got that. And on here, we've got a, it looks like an RJ45 internet cable port. Yep. So we can use that to obviously transfer back and forth. So what we will do is I am going to turn it on for the first time. Oh, there's three buttons here. I'm going to turn it on. Okay, and we'll, I'm going to see if I can connect it up and show you the menu and what it looks like. See if I can do that. If I can't, I can show you through the, the top down as well. Okay, so I have it right here. The power switch right here. Okay, boom. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> Is the battery dead? <laughs> Fuji! Fujifilm! You sent me a dead battery! <laughs> okay, I will borrow one from this camera. Don't you just love live? See, this is the stuff I edit out. You know, all of these little things. All right, let's try this one. Let's see if it can work. All right, here we go. Standing by to turn on. There it is. Okay, just went on. All right, what do we have? Let me see here. Um... English. Yeah, English. Boom. Uh, you know, the usual blah, 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 blah. I'm just going to get... I'm, I'm not going to bother with it. Okay, set. Okay, I'm just going to say set. Okay. Oh, something happened. There we go. Okay, we're good. We're on. We're online. So, what I would like to do is to show you the screen. And there's actually one really cool feature I want to show you. And I was going to talk about it in the video review that I'm going to do of this camera, but I want to show it to you now. If we have time, yeah, we do. I'll show you this real quick. So I'm going to plug in my usual, my HDMI into it. <laughs> this is a good problem to have. This is a micro HDMI because when I do my videos and I'm doing live, right, I plug it into the camera and I can demo it for you. That won't work. Luckily, luckily, I had a little bit of foresight and I brought a regular HDMI cable. So we'll just use that. <laughs> oh, this feels so good. This is, this is how it's supposed to be with a camera. This is just, you know, see, look at that. Solid, solid. The Look at just how awesome this is when you have regular. I'll even do it again. Look at this. Boom. It's awesome. So, okay, I'm going to plug this thing in to, let's see, cam screen. Yeah, that'll work. I don't know if the output will work, but we'll, hopefully it will. 
Okay, so I now have the GFX100 2 plugged into a uh, Atomos Ninja 5 monitor. Let's see if I can cast this out. Here we go. Okay, so wow, we're we're doing something here. <laughs> yep. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at the screen menu. Okay. Okay. Ah, oh, a place I feel comfortable. So let's take a quick peek here at the image size. Now have a look right down in the lower left corner, and we're. 11,648 by 8,736, 102 megabytes. And with a 64 gig SD card, I get 485 frames with that. So that should give you kind of a, can you see that? Oh, it's so hard to see it. Um, hold on. Yeah, that should, oh you, yeah, you can see the cam menu. Okay, so obviously you can go down all these things and change whatever. There's a lot of choices. I mean, a lot of choices. So let's keep it at the highest possible. I'm going to put it back to that. Four by three. Yeah, that was the highest. Okay. Image quality. F. No! Yeah, see, I don't want that. I want super fine. Okay, there. <laughs> That's funny because, okay, for raw recording, it's gone uncompressed. But that's interesting. So with the with raw, they they default to uncompressed, okay? But with the other one, image quality, they had defaulted to fine. So looking down, this is very similar to all the Fuji cameras. There's your usual IQ settings, blah blah blah. What's their color space at? Okay. Actually, I usually change this too. So you have all this, da 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 da. Let's go down through it. Face eye auto detect. <laughs> Can it, just let's have a moment. Let's just have a moment here. Face eye auto detect and autofocus on a medium format camera. That's that's pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to keep it off. Subject detection I'm going to keep off for just this video. So there's all this typical stuff. Okay. And this is all pretty standard, you know, look, they default it to electronic front curtain. Do you see that? It's defaulted to that. And I wonder why. That's interesting. Um, I'm surprised about that one. And we got, oh, we'll, we'll check out that in a minute. All right. Cooling fan setting. What is that? Auto. We got low, high and off. So, you know, if you're shooting video and you, the mic is picking up the cooling fan, you can turn it off. That's nice that that has that. Okay, so I'm not going to go into a lot of these things. What I am going to do is let's switch it over and take a look at the PASM setup. Um, and so obviously you have this, I need to get closer. Okay, you have, you have this dial. So here's your PASM dial. And they put the movie still on this side, which is kind of interesting. So bam, you flip it into movie. Now when you do that, your camera menu completely changes, I'm assuming. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, you see that? See how it just something happened. Oh, interesting. I don't have clean HD. I mean, I do have clean HDMI out. I got to fix that before you can see it. What's happening is, and this is good, the camera has a setting that says if you're recording out to an external monitor, don't show the menu controls, which is what most people want. Except for me, today, I want to show you them. So I need to change that. And it, the setting for that is just, it's right... Oh, I, I can't do it because the thing, it's called uh, HDMI output setting off. We're going to turn that sucker on. Boom. Okay. Now it's on. Now you should be able, if I go back into the menu to see the menu. Yay. There it is. By the way, it looked like this. That was the setting I did. So as you can see, what I was saying before, it changed when I flipped that movie still button. You have obviously this whole other menu. And again, you go into movie mode and now you have a lot of stuff. Um, and I'd love to dig into this, but there's your 8K. Wow. So 8K 30 frames per second max is what you're getting with this one. And obviously you've got some other things that I don't even know what they are right now. So, uh, 4K, you can go up to 60 frames per second again on a medium format. So we'll be playing with that. And you know, all the usual stuff that you normally have, you have IBIS, you have IS mode boost, all of that good thing, you know, ah, here it is. 
have a look at this. Can you see this choice right here? Waveform vector scope. This is a first for Fuji. And I might add, it is also the waveform monitor is also included in the new Nikon. Is it the ZF? I'm sorry. I honestly don't remember the, the new Nikon they were talking about last week or this week. That is included in that. So I think it's you're going to start to see this in more cameras. And it's generally used for video, although I am getting to know a number of photographers that are using waveform monitors to control exposure for stills as well, interestingly enough. And I'm going to talk about that when I make the video, but let's take a look at it. Let me go back to the um, cam menu. Let's turn this on. Okay, so we've got, oh, we've got three things here, waveform and a parade as well. These are all video specific things. So if, let's say we turn the parade on. There's our parade. So let's get something that is, I don't know, red, okay? <laughs> like this little thing. So if I aim it at this, the red should be a little bit higher, I would think. Where's the autofocus? Yeah. Yeah, interesting. So, wow, man, I'm getting like totally sucked into this, sorry. Um, I mean, just look, here's the waveform monitor and that's your standard. Although I don't see numbers on it or anything. That's it. Oh, there we go. Switch display. Oh, there we go. So you can, you can move it around, but there's no like IRE numbers or anything. That's interesting. Maybe it's got to be somewhere. Maybe I'm, I'm just missing it. And then you have your vector scope, which, you know, obviously is if you aim it at something a little more colorful, you should see it come in. Um, and that's what it kind of looks like when these things are overlaid. So, you know, there is a lot to this that I want to show you. Um, but these are tools that you normally, you've never seen on Fuji before. I've never seen them. And I think they're going to be become standard, um, you know, with that. So let's go back. I'm going to try and get some shots here. We have continual autofocus. There we go. This lens is fast. Wow. So let me go back into the menu. Hold on, if you can see, let's go. I'm switching the switch over to stills, manual focus. Okay, here we go. Focus mode all. I don't want that. I want single point. I want, uh, oh, wow. Look at this zone custom setting. Interesting. Auto focus mode. Okay. AFC this, the usual, there's that stuff again. Right. And that's actually very important. Auto point display, good. It's da, 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 da. okay. Manual. If I was turn this on, that means that um, if it's in autofocus, you can also manually adjust it as well. Okay, here we go. So if I'm focused in, okay, let's see how fast the focus is on this. Oh, let me get to cam menu. All right. So that's hold on. I'm, I need to be further away. Hold on, let me get a little thing. Okay. Okay, I just took a just took a shot. <laughs> and now what I'd like to do, yeah, okay. There's so much I want to talk about with this thing, and I didn't even go through, and the reason I'm not going through it. I don't want, I mean, I could take this off like this and we could try putting on the viewfinder, but to be perfectly honest with you, I want to read up on this and really make sure that we're doing it right and that it's the settings are correct for it. And that is for the video. So I'm not going to put this thing on right now, but just know that this is part of it where this can flip up and you can use it for that, which is kind of nice for er ergonomics. Okay, so let me take out, I just want to see the file size. Anybody want to see the file size of, that was the largest possible, you know, image that I could get on that camera. Let me see if I can show you that. So here it is. So let me go into, can we get desktop going? Desktop, desktop. Can you see this? Yeah, all right. How's that? Any, and you see anything? I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. Okay. So this is what I get. Three of these things. Activities for the app. That's the, I think it's for the app. 
Fujifilm database. I forget what that's for, but this is where the images are. Oh, there's lots of images. Okay. So that's because I had, <laughs> I had a whole bunch on that card. So what I think it's in here. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Right click, get info. And let's take a look at this. We are 35 megs. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. 35 megs. Hold on a minute. That doesn't seem that that seems to me like it should be more. <laughs> let me take a look just here. Oh, image quality small. All right, let me do this again. No, super fine. That super fine plus raw. I want to see what a raw is. Sorry about that. I just kind of spaced out. I'm going to do one more real quick. All right, so we're just going to take one more here, and I need the card. <laughs> okay, so we'll do one more shot, and this time we'll take it at its highest. Okay, got it. And... Oops. All right, put it back in the computer. Let's see what we're at. Desktop. Boom. Okay, can you see? I think you can. Uh, all right. There we go. Here we go. Okay, <laughs> that's more like it. 208 megs for that one uncompressed raw file, right? Um, that's, a, that's a big one. And obviously, I think my shutter speed was really slow. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's all bl terrible. This is like a horrible first shot to get. Yeah, <laughs> wow, that's great. That's the first shot I took with the GFX. <laughs> oh, that I would have edited it out if it were, you know, <laughs> a video. <laughs> There's a lot for me to go over with this camera, but I wanted to unbox it and show you, my, you know, my impression seeing it. It's a premium product for sure. It's heavier than I thought. It's denser than I thought. And the, in terms of just the, the feel of it, I love it. I love it. I mean, I just, I love how s solid these doors are. It, from an ergonomic standpoint, it, it really just feels great. You know, if you, if you just have a look at all of the components of it, it's just a gorgeous camera. Absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. You know, PASM dial, focus, there we go. See that, so. Um, and the interesting thing, look at this. There's three buttons right here. Boom, boom, boom. And I don't know what you can exactly do with them, how assignable they are. So, you know, I will I will go into all that. And please put your questions in the comments so that I could um, answer them if you have any. Okay. That was hard. <laughs> because I am... I am such a control freak and and that's a that's a problem. I mean it's it's a really bad thing to to have to be. And so doing these someone said my Mac crashed. No, I don't think so. I see myself live. Can you guys see me okay? Something happened. So uh, comment if I've gone offline because I am seeing myself unless I'm living in a parallel universe, I still see myself. Um Kyle, I, Fuji sent it to me. When this live stream is done, it'll be automatically published to YouTube and go ahead and watch the first like 10 minutes of it. And I go into how I got the camera. I only have it for two weeks. Okay, just so we're clear, I didn't buy this camera and I have to return it. Um, it it's a little bit out of my pay grade. <laughs> so, so yeah. Um, okay, so you can see, great, because somebody said they, they couldn't see. Hey, Aaron's here. Aaron Anderson, cool, man. Uh, I got some, got some great people on the thing. Oh, it was a joke. Oh, you guys. So any questions on the GFX 102, put them in the comments. And I definitely, yeah, you're right. I'm, <laughs> Jim is 100% right. <laughs> no sleep for me. So yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay, get that off there. Okay, so who else do we have here? Natalie, how you doing, Natalie? Good to see you, David. Okay, any more comments on the GF? 
X. Gordon, good to see you, man. Thank you for the great advice on the HDMI cable. I don't know if you saw my latest video on the firmware upgrade. I broke another HDMI cable, so always a lot of fun. <laughs> Greg, Tony, Kyle. Okay, so it is time for me to run. going to keep it short and sweet today because I got some things to do. But it was awesome to see you all here. This was sort of a last minute live stream. Thank you to Fuji North America for sending this thing out to me. And yes, I, I will return it in two weeks, I promise. And I'll, I'll even return it unharmed and unbroken and non, I won't break any cables. I won't crack anything. It'll be returned in perfect condition, I promise. Oh, hey, Miles. Good to see you, pal. You're going to love these. Uh, and I don't know if you just joined, Miles, but I go over in, I showed in this live stream the Vectroscope. There's a waveform monitor built in. It's really cool. A little confused by it. I got to study up on it, but I am definitely going to be talking about that in future videos. So, okay, everyone, um, I'm going to go. For those of you who joined, thank you for all of the backstage members. Thank you so much for supporting the channel, YouTube members. You keep the lights on around here. We have two new Gear Iguana Hall of Fame members. I got to get on that. I got to get on that. So we're going to be announcing those in new videos. If you have any comments you want to make to me, put them down below. I read all of the comments from the stream. Later on, I get a text file with everything. So I probably won't be able to respond to everybody, but I absolutely will read them. So in the meantime, have a wonderful weekend. And I will definitely see you in a new video next week. Take care. Uh, do that, too. <laughs> no, seriously, it's hard to be found on YouTube. The, the, the like and subscribe is, is a kind of an important thing now, and I never used to care about it, but it is. Okay, we're done with that. Have a good weekend. Wait! Thank you, Jim, for the, the super chat. No more super chats. I got to go. But thank you, Jim. Take care. I really got to go this time. Um, but I didn't want to not mention that and, and say thank you. So, Jim, you're, you're awesome. I appreciate it. Take care, pal.